Welcome back to another episode of Legend of Zelda. So, I took some time to actually get my health to full, and I ended up finding on the map um, an extra heart. So, I have one more heart for insurance here. Was not able to find the where the potions are, so I'll just have to make do. However, this is it. This is gonna be the one. We're gonna do it. Let's start this strong, guys. Starting strong, we're gonna beat this dragon. Dragons. Oh, jeez. Okay. Dang it. Stop. Cause the it's got a weird hitbox. Like I don't know where it's safe. Okay. 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 Can I actually block it with my shield? Have I been making this harder on myself? No. Okay. I'm not able to block it with my shield. Okay. Jeez! Alright, we did it. <sighs> okay. <laughs> it's, it's like the opening to, uh... It's like the opening to the third Hobbit movie. You just, you fight the... Yeah, anyway... <laughs> anybody who saw the, the third Hobbit movie knows what I'm saying. Like, the way I, I just opened this episode. Okay. Um, what was that movie called? Battle of the... Battle of the... Whatever. Five Armies? I think it was the Battle of the Five Armies. As you can see right there, what I just walked past, that was like an extra heart that I found. Okay. So, I didn't look at the map to see where Dungeon 5 was, but lucky me, we stumbled onto Dungeon 5 earlier, in, the, in an earlier episode, so I believe I still remember how to get there. So I'm gonna head over there now. Yeah, that was like where the waterfall and then the... They were like, up, 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 up the mountain. So we're gonna go up, 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 up the mountain. And that's the thing we're gonna do. Here we go. Wait, what's on the other side? What's on this side? What's through here? <laughs> I want to know what's up here. Now that I can actually, like, use the ladder and cross. Oh. One of you guys. These guys are cool. Because they, they move really funny. Oh, jeez. I'm just gonna... Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. Two... Two hearts. Spectacle rock. Ah, dang it. Oh, God. They're so strong. Okay. What is this? Oh, there's so many of them. That's so bad. Oh my god. Okay. All right. I don't know what. <laughs> why did I? Why did I bother? Oh my god. I don't think I want to fight these guys. I think I just want to go. Oh my god. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no! No! They will kill me! Do you have a heart? No! Go! Okay. Uh, let's go find the. Let's go find the fairy. Let's go find the fairy. There's a fairy over here. It's the, this is my go-to fairy. <sighs> what is my death count? My gosh. Alright. Moving on. Ugh. It does feel good when I pick up the one, the, uh, when they drop, like, five pieces of rupee. The five-piece rupees are, are very gratifying to pick up. Alright, so... I, I wanted to, I wanted to, uh... I actually wanted to touch a little bit more on what I said last time, which was... You know, about, about, uh, raiding on, on, on Warcraft, World of Warcraft, and other such games. And... It's... 
it's wonderful. I'm not going to, to knock it and say you shouldn't play those kind of games. I think those kind of games are great for the teamwork aspect. It's really great when you have a lot of people that you can befriend and stuff like that. Like, um... Uh, one guy that I know, he... Always, he was talking about his... He, he participates in competitive barbecue, and uh, I got to visit his place. This was a guy who was on one of my raid teams back on Star Wars, and we got to hang out a bunch of us, and it was super cool meeting a lot of the players like that. And, and so, like, I say that's the kind of thing that you can take with you. But, like, when it comes to, like, being super hardcore raider, those aren't the experiences that I can take with me anywhere. And, and they have no... They, they don't... This, it's not something that I could say, like, use in a resume and say that I was a hardcore raider and we serve first at Illidan or whatever. Um, server, server first in Illidan. That's something that, like, you have to, you'd have to have been playing WoW during, like, Burning Crusade to know what I'm talking about. Um, but, yeah. It's just... It's... Event server first thing to be a server first is like in uh, a lot of these kind of games, people would aspire to be the first ones to defeat the bosses that have been released in the game. So like let's let's say a, a new dungeon has been released with five new bosses. If so, people will race like the raid teams. They will race to be the first ones and then they can claim it and say we were the first ones to kill the boss uh, when the game was released or when that new dungeon was released. And um, that was something we used to do but but at the end of the day that's not an experience that I can take with me. You know what I mean? But uh, getting to hang out at a cool person's house and have some awesome barbecue and you know just like talk story and all that and make new friends. Like that that's that's an experience that I can take with me from playing World of Warcraft. Or not World of Warcraft. Well just any MMO, you know, in this case that was Star Wars the Old Republic. That's something I can take with me from playing from, from playing those kind of games. Um so yeah. Like, I'm not knocking raiding. You can totally get involved with MMOs and raiding and stuff like that. I just feel like it's more important to have to make lasting friendships and to meet new people than it is to uh to be so caught up in being like a hardcore raider and being the server first and whatever. Definitely if you know, take the game seriously and if you want to progress in the game and you want to be with like-minded people that also want to progress, then that's cool. Just remember that the most important thing I would argue is making sure that you make some good friends along the way and develop some lasting friendships. That is what, that is the kind of good that can come from playing online games. The people you meet. It's not about server firsts. Or being a or being the guy with the highest DPS. It's not about the guy with being the guy who does the most who has the highest kill count in the game. It's about the it's about the people you meet and the friendships you make. And that's real talk. Dig Dogger hates certain kind of sound. Thank you. I also hurt <laughs> I also hate certain kinds of sounds. You know what sound I really don't like? The sound of babies crying. Oh my gosh. You know, I've always thought about, um... Someday, maybe, you know, when my acting career takes off, I hope and aspire to be interviewed on Inside the Actors Studio with James Lipton. I don't know if James Lipton will, Lipton will be the one to interview me, but I would love to be interviewed on Inside the Actors Studio. And I've always thought about, like, that question. What? What is the sound that you hate the most? Um, I I have thought about saying the sound of babies crying, but I would not I would not give that answer. And I'm not actually going to give that answer on the stream or not the stream, but uh, I'm actually not going to give the answer on this uh, on this recording. I am going to save those answers for the day that I am on inside the actor studio. Just know that I do have answers, that I, I do know what I would say to each question. <laughs> but in general, I do not like the sound of babies crying. I don't know why it is that no matter where I fly, I inevitably, whenever I get on a plane, it seems that I am always seated near in the near proximity of babies crying. And 
It just makes me feel like, my gosh. Could you wait? Could you wait before you visited Hawaii? <laughs> it's always on my- it's always on the flight back to Hawaii. Like, I'm visiting the mainland. And then, like, I fly back to Hawaii, back home. And somebody- there's always somebody with a baby. And I just feel like, damn, man, you couldn't- couldn't wait a few years till your child was older. Now I, I gotta sit there <laughs> and listen to this baby cry on the plane. Eh, that's just my own little thought. I just- I wonder if someday if that's gonna happen with me, where... Where I'm going to, uh... Have children, and the babies will cry. Uh, and I'll have children- I'll have babies crying on, on the plane. That, that, like, my children will be babies crying on the plane, and they're like, now I'm that guy? I wonder if that would ever happen with me. Um... And if it does happen, then I- I will definitely be sitting there with my baby, being like, Oh my god, I'm that guy right now. I'm, oh god, this is so- these are so dangerous. Can I- No! Okay, can I just- No! Um... Is this seriously something that I have to fight my way through? Oh jeez! Or can this just not be moved? Am I wasting my time? You're wasting your time! Okay. God. Who would have thought that, like, the simplest mechanic of just somebody walking forward could be, could be the most nerve-wracking, dangerous thing? These are like Goombas, but worse. These are like... <sighs> oh my gosh! Oh jeez! No! Oh. Do these things take two of my hearts? Do they take my hearts away? <sighs> Can I hit them with arrows? <sighs> Dang it! Why, why do I have arrows for? Dang it! Oh god! <sighs> Jeez! Jeez! Oh my gosh, these guys are so strong! Uh, that was- that was three hits already. These guys take four hits. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm so afraid that they're gonna just, like, randomly turn around when I'm advancing on them. And I'm gonna walk into them. That's the thing that makes them scary. <laughs> A fairy! Oh my gosh. Please, come here! Please! Okay. Uh. Okay. All right. Can I can I even get this thing open? I don't think I can get this thing open. Okay. Jeez. Okay. So I'm looking at I just noticed the time and it might be, it's it's time to end this episode. So, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna end it in here, in this place. Okay, let me just get this bat. Okay. <laughs> I will see you guys on the next episode later.